This time, uh, to outline the gold parts, I'm adding a bit more of uh, gold brown to the ice yellow. That's because I don't want to add pure ice yellow now. Probably I will add some brights later with, with that. So with this near or this close to uh, ice yellow color, I can add a small brights and, and outline areas of, of, uh, of light like this this one of the lower part of the seal the small seal or whatever it is and of course use this uh, this color to add brights and outline edges of the of the different parts of the of the figure we can use this color also not only to uh, outline the edges but also to add brights in the more intense areas of light. This is useful to boost the, the effect of uh, metallic in the, in the parts of the, of the model. And it's important to um, outline the rivets. I think I have said it before in the part one, but uh, this is important because it adds definition to the to the model because it has a lot of detail. Also, with pure ice yellow now, I can add brights in in areas where uh, two or more lines converge. I mean, in, in a vertex, uh, and obviously in other areas that uh, we perceive that a bright could be useful or, or adds uh, or boost boost the the effect of. Uh, some chrome uh, golden also in the head for example is useful because this is a bit confusing because of the detail in a very small zone so adding this bright with pure is yellow or in the shoulder part like i'm doing right now uh, is uh, is better to to achieve the effect don't forget to outline in the best way possible the ornaments on the different areas of the figure that are confusing, uh, like the the ornaments of the shoulder part, or maybe this point of the weapon because it's a bit uh, high from the from the viewable, the small uh, holes of the of the weapons, and everything that you find is uh, not well defined from the distance. Uh, it gets always uh, benefit from the the outlining process. Well, the, gold, the golden parts are ready, uh, in any case, uh, take into consideration that when we apply the shadow outlining, it will boost a bit more because it will contrast more. And now I'm going to paint the red part and the white part of the shoulder pads. It's a bit easy process because I just want to add a bit more of color and contrast on it. So I take in this uh, matte red from Vallejo which is a cold, a cold red and, and it will fit very well with the blue, which is a, a cold color too. So because I'm applying light, I'm applying a more brighter color. Uh, look how my uh, brush stroke is traveling to the light area from the shadow to the light. As you see, it will finish my brush stroke in the area of more light. It will help to achieve a smooth transition and to uh, accumulate pigment in the area that I want. Well, look, this is like a dark purple. Much better in this way. Okay, with this dark purple, because purple is a color that is familiar with the red, I can add shadows over the, the red part of the shoulder pad. The black that, that I have used is an ink, so be careful and you have to dilute more than usual because the inks are very intense and covers very well and actually we are using a dark color so it covers again more than when a, with a, a brighter color. So applying very diluted uh, glazes over this, the lower part of the, of the shoulder pad, we can add more contrast as you see and obtain a nice blending, a nice smooth transition. Now it's time to uh, do the same process with the, with the white. In this case, I'm, I'm taking this blue within the black 
and mix him with a bit of uh, with a bit of um, uh, scroll white or, or any other white that you have I'm uh, achieving a some kind of uh, grayish blue blue grayish similar to the blue the arctic blue that we have used before but as you see in the paper is more grayish than the other one but you can use also uh, a dark sea blue of um, model color or any other color that is grayish but a bit more bluish than the gray itself so the process is the same applying diluted uh, coats of color glazes over the white take into consideration that the white is a is a is the more the, the brighter color that we have uh, we can use so applying a shadow over it uh, we need to dilute more than usual because any other color in the in the in the option that you have choose or you can choose will uh, affect the white more than than in than if it did, it was other color as you see just by doing two or, th or three very diluted glazes i have changed the color of the lower part of the shoulder pad so that's what i was saying that is the the white is very um, it's very easy to corrupt now with inks and a bit of blue maybe with more blue it's better this black ink and, and a bit of the medium blue uh, results in this kind of dark, very dark blue. Uh, you can see that when it accumulates, it looks like black, but if I extend it, uh, like Alfonso do in, in many videos, you can see that it has a, a, a bluish feeling. With this very dark color, I'm aligning the shadow parts of every part of the of the figure because this color is like a, a joker in, in, the, in painting. It will work. Uh, with almost every color, maybe except with the, the brighter ones like the white, but in this case, because it's uh, near the golden part, it will work uh, anyway. Um, <clears throat> as you see, I'm aligning everything. I have aligned the half of the figure because I want to show you how to do it, the, the shadow lining, but using um, shades from, from Game Workshop. <clears throat> But before that, I'm taking this dark purple and see how it, how just by adding a glaze in the in the planes of the figure that are hidden from the light or hide from the light, um, I can add more contrast and define better the different shapes of the of the figure. This is something similar to what we have seen in the in the video of the of the Invincible from Infinity. Are just glazes, guys. Uh, it's very easy to do. It's more important the the area where you put because this form of the the shape of the of the shoulder part that is curved. Just by adding this uh, glaze of dark purple, is uh, creating a new shape that we have uh, more, more noticeable now than previously because uh, it was a bit hidden from the interpretation of our eye because of the color. And now, as I was saying, I'm going to show you how to align with this black uh, shade from Game Workshop and a bit of the black ink, just a bit of the black ink because this ink is going to boost a bit the coverage of the shade because the black shade is a bit, uh, a bit weak and the ink will boost it, its coverage and, and we will obtain a better result because the properties of both colors are now together. And with the black ink, the, 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 just the drop of black ink that we have added to the, to the shade, uh, we have created a mix of properties between them. And you can see that with these properties, we can align being, uh, being less uh, careful because the property of the of the shade that is that it flows to the gap, it's still uh, present in the in the in the mixture, but now it's covering better, so the outline is more powerful. It allows me to to be more uh, rough in the outlining and it's true that the the effect is wor worse that. Uh, compared with the compared with the with the inks, 
or, or a classical ink plus uh, normal paint acrylic uh, mixture that I'm using in, in every pro process, but this uh, combo of, uh, of say done inks uh, for those of you that are uh, less precise because you are not uh, habituated to, to paint or you are starting in the miniature world or whatever uh, needs to be more um, less, sorry, <laughs> needs to be less precise uh, because you don't have the precision needed to be uh, to do a classic outlining and it's okay there's no problem with that this is just a trick that maybe uh, allows you to to uh, to advance to a medium stage of precision and after that you will find um, confident enough to uh, try to do the the outlining the classic outlining in the in the figure but I have to say one thing to you is uh, and is that the precision is gained when we try to be precise. So never uh, forget that and, and let's try to be precise. Well, well this is the figure uh, outlining in, in all the areas. Uh, this is a, a mistake that I have uh, created while outlining. Uh, also in this part of the process you can use this dark uh, this dark uh, outlining process to add, for example, the holes in the weapon or to uh, fix any other mistake in the figure. But well, this is the the result. And now it's time to to add the the weathering in the in the figure. Um, because of its scale, uh, it's more or less like adding weathering in a in a space marine or any other model. Uh, because of the combination of colors that are blue, uh, white and red, a dark gray will fit very well with all the colors. So I'm going to go for this uh, dark gray to make the um, scratches over the surface just by mixing black and, and this off-white, this scroll white that I have in the web palette. And when, when I have the dark gray that I want, which is this one, look how in the in the paper looks like it's uh, black but it's not black it's just a very dark gray with this color and a medium dilution not this one this is only for for you to see that it's not pure black but with a mid dilution so it's important to have the the brush dry in a first stance not be because if you add water uh, to the mixture it will not going very well to, to the scratches but with this medium or low dilution on the, on the paint I have to outline the edges it's more similar to outline edges that to add the scratches itself but doing that in a different way because instead of doing lines in the edges I'm jumping as you see I'm like pointing in the edges to create a small scratch and sometimes I can do this that is like a, a don't know, like like a long scratch or, or, or a cut over the surface, but it's important to be fast, like this. Fast with decision. No, no, don't try not to dab uh, when when doing that, because if, if you try to draw the the cut, it will looks very very rare, very false, and it's just something about doing more sketches. Obviously in the edges of the of every part will be more believable than if you add scratches everywhere. But sometimes like in this part or any other uh, inside part of the armor or the plate that you are doing uh, weathering, you can add small scratches, but not too much because if you do that, it, it will look uh, false, fake. Now you can outline the scratches. That is something that adds more detail and definition to the to the structure, to the to the model, with this clear blue, the same blue that we have used to outline the, the other parts of the blue. You can outline the different scratches. Obviously, you can or you must uh, outline again the edges of the of the armor, but jumping again, not doing uh, entire lines. But jumping in the different edges 
and also uh, outlining the lower part of the scratches. Now I'm going to add stains of uh, rust because the orange that I have is very intense. I have mixed it with the, the English uniform, which is more or less a red, uh, not a red, a brown, sorry. And when mixing with the orange, it creates a brownish, brownish orange. With this color, I can add, as you see, stains of rust and rust accumulated in, in gaps. Be more or less random in the gaps, but uh, choose your more beautiful scratches to, to boost them with a stain of rust on over it. To do that is just to be, you have only to be uh, uh, precise doing a small rust uh, stains because if you do them too big, it will look again very fake. You got to think that this model is supposed to be, I don't know, 200 meters uh, height. So the scratches really will be so uh, small that we can see them, but we are faking the effort uh, doing this, this kind of uh, scratches. But this is important to do, that's because it's important to do them small because if not, they will look more fake than, than we want in the model. You can add also uh, more orangey stains in some parts if you want. I'm using more or less the same orange all the time. You can see that this detail is very pretty cool, but from a distance it's not very noticeable. But it's nice to have two different ways, two different levels of detail in a figure because from the distance look looks great, but if someone Take your model and, and take a look, a closer look on it. We'll see a lot of detail like the scratches, the stains, etc. I'm applying the decals over this, the miniature. Uh, I was thinking in doing free hands, but I'm too lazy today, and, and I think it's not useful for you because it's very small. And I use the decals. I will, I will do if you want a uh, tool and tips about how to apply decals in the correct way. But now it's time to show you how to integrate the decals in the overall scheme of the figure. This is a very important thing, at least in my opinion, to give the figure a believable effect of everything is painted. Unless it's true that it's not painted, but we want to, uh, to make the people think that it's all painted in the figure, not like a sticker. So the decals that we have used uh, have to be integrated in the figure and the, the easier way to do that is this one. If I have a decal that is in a blue background like this school, I can use blue to try to broke the um, the perimeter or, or the or the shape of the of the dec of the decal. So I usually go for the uh, the edges of I don't know, the, not the edges, the, the, the form, the contour of the different uh, drawings. Just because I want the eye to to forget that this is a perfect shape. shape. And that's the, the key part of the process, the main part of the process, to destroy the perfection of the decal. That's because we broke the, the perimeter or we broke the shape and we add uh, stains over it, like these rusty stains that I have add uh, in the in the different decal parts and it's the same process in every part of the decals also in this uh, solar part with a lot of squares i want to broad the squares with white and as you see i broke most of them and uh, in the in the eagle part the same i broke the eagle try not to be too rough destroying everything but destroy uh, as you can to uh, achieve the, the effect. Well, um, I'm going to paint the base. First, I add a coat of uh, matte red because I want to, because I have the red in the in the web palette, but I, can, I can choose between any other reds. And now with the orange, uh, I take advantage of the advantage of the color that I have in the web palette. I'm adding random. Uh, stains of orange in the in the surface. I'm trying to achieve a lava a lava effect because I wanna to do a, some lava uh, ground in the in the model, but I don't want I don't know if I'm going to achieve this. 
and now with this yellow from Chimera Colors, which is a, a warm yellow, I applied it uh, again uh, in a uh, random random stains, but following more or less the the previously ones, because I want to uh, wet wet blend the the colors. This is very rough, very funny, very fast. Don't think too much because we don't need to think too much, especially if we have in mind what we we are going to do later. And I'm adding now more yellow, and that now yellow mixed with uh, white. And finally, even I can add uh, pure white in some areas because when I apply it in a in a wet part, it will mix with it and change the color. So. As you see, guys, this is more or less a, a an effect of lava, not very, uh, not very good from a closer view, but in the distance, uh, more or less it works, and you are going to see it after applying these white spots. As you see, the effect is more or less convincible enough for for one I want to do. Uh, I'm going to apply the this texture paint from Game Workshop, which is called uh, Martian Iron Earth, which is a cracker, and I hope it will uh, let to let to to see the under part of the texture. Uh, with this uh, rubber brush, um, I'm applying a thin layer of this texture. If it is too thick, I think it will it won't work. Uh, this is the thickness of the layer and now I have to let it dry and if it works it will be nice if not it will be my fault and guys this is not working <laughs> I think the layer was too thick um, you can see in in some parts of the of the base that the lower part the lava effect is uh, slightly visible so Okay, this is a failure experiment. I will try to do best next time. But the effect, any 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 way, is uh, it's great at least for me. It fits very well with the overall look of the figure because the orangey look of the base is a complementary color of blue, and make it more uh, noticeable in the in the in this base, this kind of base. Probably we'll add later pigments with orange or yellow pigments. We, you will see in the in the final peaks, but. I will do it uh, off camera because it's a, a very easy thing. Well, guys, this is the end of the process. I hope you have enjoyed it and, and you have learned with it. Uh, remember that it's very important to me if you share this content in your WhatsApp groups, in your social media, Facebook, etc., uh, because it's a free content. So at the end, uh, it is what it is. Uh, it's something to, to share and to enjoy with uh, all the people or as many people as possible. Remember that uh, if you want to support me, I have a Patreon available uh, that allows me to generate more content, more free content and more uh, specific content uh, for, for teaching and learning uh, the miniature painting. And nothing more, guys. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for, for being here watching this video and tell me your, your doubts or your comments in the, in the video comment box or whatever thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye bye